this power bank holds 10,000 mAh. If a phone has a 5,000 mAh battery, how many full charges can I get out of the power bank? The logical answer seems to be 2, because the power bank holds 2 times more energy than the battery inside the phone. But in reality, the power bank dies much sooner than you would expect. Are we being scammed? Only sometimes. You can still buy fake power banks with ridiculously exaggerated capacity ratings. But even genuine portable batteries from well-known brands can be confusing with their capacity, while still being technically accurate with their numbers. What is going on? Part of the problem is that the process of moving energy from the power bank to the phone is not 100% efficient. If we take this one apart, we'll find a battery similar to the one inside the phone, along with some electronic bits on a circuit board. It may be cylindrical or in the shape of a pouch, like this one, but in any case, it's going to have a nominal voltage of around 3.6-3.7 volts. However, you probably know that a USB port supplies 5 volts as standard. Some fast charging systems can go even higher, up to 20 volts and beyond. A single battery cannot charge a phone by itself. That is why a power bank always has some kind of a DC voltage converter. Its function is to boost the voltage from the battery to the required 5 volts or more. Or to reduce it if the power bank uses several battery cells in series. No matter the case, this conversion of one voltage to another is never 100% efficient. Here I have the circuit board from the power bank connected to my power supply. As expected, I am getting 5 volts on the output from just 3.7 volts on the input. There's a bit of current being drawn by my USB meter. But look what happens when I connect this USB LED light. My meter shows that it's consuming 1 watt of power, and the circuit board is pulling 1.1 watts from my power supply. This demonstration shows that around 10% of the energy being transferred is lost in the process. On top of that, the phone may have to step down whatever voltage is supplied to it. If the phone's battery is directly connected to the 5 volts from the USB port, it will be damaged. And you guessed it, you lose more energy in that step-down process. That is why your phone gets warm when it's charging. Things are now starting to get even more complicated as new power banks are being introduced with new battery chemistries. Lithium iron phosphate battery cells are safer, last through more charging cycles and can tolerate higher temperatures. However, they have a lower nominal voltage of around 3.2 volts, compared to 3.6-3.7 volts for lithium-ion cells. Technically, this is not a problem, but it may lead to confusion. Battery capacity is usually expressed in milliamp hours or amp hours, probably because this is the unit that people are familiar with. So if a battery is rated for 5 amp hours, it can supply 5 amps of current for 1 hour, 1 amp for 5 hours, and so on. But check this out, here is the battery pack from my cordless drill, and this is a battery cell from a laptop. Both are about 2600 milliamp hours, but this one holds 3 times more energy. In fact, if you look closely, you can kind of tell there are 3 battery cells similar to this one inside the battery pack. What is up with that? The difference in energy capacity is related to their different voltages. The voltage of this battery pack is 3 times greater because it uses 3 battery cells in series, but it still has the same amp hour rating as the laptop battery. There is a better unit that takes voltage into account. That is the watt hour, and it's what you get when you multiply the amp hour rating of a battery by its voltage. We should be using watt hours if we want to easily compare battery and power bank capacity, regardless of chemical composition. In fact, some brands already do, especially for their bigger power stations. But we still run into cases like this one. Here's a power bank using lithium iron phosphate batteries that can hold a whopping 90,000 milliamp hours. There is a huge capacity, don't get me wrong. But to get the same energy capacity using lithium ion cells, you would need just 76,000 milliamp hours worth of battery cells, a difference of 15%. So when comparing power banks, always look at the watt hour ratings. And if they are not listed, you now know how to do the math. And always consider the charge estimates given on the product page to get a better idea of how many charges that power bank can provide. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.